ready to go then uh, There's no kids here are there? Okay yeah, it's not that bad, but I mean, why risk it? I don't want to get an email. <laughs> reaming me out. I've been reamed out numerous times on emails, but it's 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 part of the business. You just got to let it go. Yeah. Another shooting yesterday or today, and pretty soon, those will be uh, weekly events. There'll be, there'll be so many shootings here in the near future, probably by next year. They'll be coming out weekly, and nobody's even going to be able to remember the shootings. They're going to be so so constant. Now, the devil swept pot all over the United States, and now he's sweeping sports gambling all over. The, I mean, he's he's going to gut us. And uh, believe it or not, this kind of a ministry. Is going to be a boomer in the future believe it or not because the regular churches are not going to be able to handle the numbers of emotionally and mentally ill people coming out of all the trauma can you hear that buzzing coming out of the trauma around the United States it's going to be hell on wheels here can you imagine pot in every state that's incredible. Pot lets spirits in your head so fast you can't even believe it. They just float right into your brain. Smoking pot. Smoking crack and uh, crystal meth, those are really good for demons too. They just float right into your head. It's awful. I mean, very awful. Sports gambling, sports betting, that's the death knell. Can you imagine that? Sports betting in America You pick your cell phone up you place a bet in seconds I did a radio show on it because uh, England already has sports betting and I sh went through the radio show I went through the points of how horrible their situation is and all the problems it causes in England and so we're going to get England times 10 times 100 Anything England do, screws up we can screw up To the 10th power We're super screw-ups. There's trainee screw-ups over there All right, let's get on with uh, this touchy subject If you uh, get mad at me or anything Take a couple of deep breaths And remember that you have to forgive me or you can't go to heaven oh, that's, a, that's a heavy burden to carry home with you Ooh, I have to can forgive that idiot oh well, that's tough all right let's pretend I'm one of your relatives the radio station is booming listeners way up and things are going great I'm on every day of the week now those are going well you can catch them on the internet 24 7 right there on Omni FM. You can get that off the website. Here's a dark sky radio, and it is kind of dark over there. It's a secular station. The first week I had a hundred and uh, I can't remember the figure, it was like 142, something like that. Mm -hmm. Listeners, the first week. The second week I had uh, 297 listeners, and then last week. I had uh, 1,286 listeners, so it's it's uh, tripling every week, and that's a secular station. So I just thought I'd take a shot at it, and it turned turned out fantastic. It just keeps going, and apparently they like the uh, unusual topics I choose or something. I don't know what it is, but anyway, I'm trying to get the word out, and it seems to be working on this place. So I'm gonna. Expand my internet radio ministry next year for sure and Try and pick out some good ones All right, if you go and switch from Google to good search and put in our ministry name They'll pay us when you surf the web if you shop on Amazon those of you who are high rollers If you put in our ministry name, they'll give us 1.2 percent of whatever you buy just go to smile amazon.com it's the same as the other one and Click and thank you for helping us. 
won't cost you anything they pay us tonight's uh, sex seminar is on YouTube channel number two house of healing AZ don't forget about the miracle list if you know somebody needs to be delivered I'll send you one of these lists they work fantastic if the person does them unfortunately the devil uh, does everything he can to stop that thing just send me an email Mike at hardcore Christianity.com and I'll be happy to send it to you I send out about a dozen or so a week don't rem don't forget uh, part of our ministry is you opening up a terror cell in your church particularly if you go to a mega church and start terrorizing the devil you can set up a team of two or three people based on Matthew 18 and start picking off the sick people in your church just pick them off quietly on the side undercover subrosa pretend you're a spiritual private investigator and you're floating around your church and you spot a sick person then you set up a plan on how to move in on them then you kind of sneak up on them and then you say hey would you like prayer or something like that you know and God will open the door for you Boop, and it'll suddenly open and bang they get delivered word spreads around you become very popular and then you become very hated don't forget about the donations tonight our donation boxes are on the exit doors they're all uh, chained until they're full so no one will be leaving tonight don't forget about the donations on the website thank you for your PayPal donations those are the things that really keep us afloat tonight's teaching is based on the uh, King James Bible that's the one I use that's a pretty good translation but we sell the best translation known to man as far as I'm concerned it's this one right here the KJ3 Bible in the bookstore that's the best translation I've ever seen of the Word of God they just translated it out as best they could and left you to figure out the rest so they just translated whatever it said whereas all the other translations try to help you understand it so they put a little clarification here and there and with it they didn't do that they just translated as you can't translate it exactly because English doesn't work like that for Greek but as close as you can get to it. all right <clears throat> Sexual activity is extremely spiritual and it's extremely powerful. The devil knows that, and that's why he has perverted it so bad because he knows what he's doing, and most Christians don't. Now, let's go to some definitions before we get into the uh, training, real quickly, and just uh, try and clear up some of the problems right out of the gate. These Greek words. Are used to describe, uh, or excuse me, are translated uh, to describe these English words. Pornia is translated as fornication in the Bible, and fornication is any kind of sexual sin whatsoever. Anything you can think of in your head right now, name anything. The fornication is the umbrella of sexual sin. So any sin you thought of or done or seen done falls under that category so it would be pedophilia bestiality uh, heterosexual activity doesn't matter oral sex, whatever it is everything falls under that umbrella okay now it breaks down after that in the Word of God moikia is the Greek word for adultery in the Bible and that is referring to heterosexual activity heterosexual so if you were sexually involved with someone of the same sex that would not be considered adultery that would be considered fornication pornos is a Greek word <coughs> translated as whoremonger in the King James Bible that word is not relevant anymore but it's uh, actually means a sexually promiscuous male this word porne is translated as harlot in the King James Bible and that's not working anymore either uh, that means basically means a sexually uh, promiscuous female pornos is a male 
Porne is a female. Aselgia is the word translated in two ways in the Bible, wantonness and lasciviousness. And that is some kind of a sensual behavior on your part. So the best illustration of that would be flirting or uh, working a pole. Don't raise your hands, but if you've ever worked a pole before, that would fall under the category of wantonness or lascivious. Now, what you're trying to do is stimulate or arouse the passions of another person, regardless of method, <clears throat> regardless of your technique, it doesn't matter, it would fall under those two words. And that's what it means in the Bible. Okay? And so here you see the collection, a short one, of fornication. If you see a uh, sexual sin on there or you don't see one doesn't matter put it on there in your mind It all falls under the same category pornea or fornication Okay, any questions on that section? And I'm assuming no one's mad at me This is going great. I had no idea. All right, let's take a pop quiz See if I can get some of you jacked up here Okay, here's your quiz. If you had sex with an animal, okay, and you say, well, that never happens. Believe it or not, I've been a counselor for 37 years. It doesn't happen regularly. I don't see that constantly, but I don't know, once a quarter or so, somebody will come in and they had a relationship with a pet. It's usually a dog or if they lived on a farm, you know, the old jokes that go along with farming. Believe it or not, there's some truth to that. Um, what happens is the person if the person has lust demons and they uh, Start a negative behavior with an animal through systematic desensitization That behavior if you keep repeating it becomes natural or normal and your conscience sears and So it doesn't bother you anymore, and that's exactly how all sexual sin works you try the behavior and then as you repetitively do the behavior your conscience sears and it doesn't bother you anymore so pedophiles when they first start fondling children have a strike in their conscience and it it's hurting them there, there's a warning sign going off hey that's that's wrong don't touch a kid there don't grab their crotch don't rub them something's telling them that is not right even if they don't even know god their conscience that God gave them tells them that's not a behavior you should be doing. But as they continue to repeat it because of their lustful urges and the demons, they lose their sensitivity to the sin of it. So they just continue to do it. And that's what happens with bestiality. So that would be, in your opinion, what? Muikia or pornea? Pornea is the correct answer. Right? So. You're married and you find out your husband had a date with a goat. That would be pornea, correct. He, he's not committing adultery on you with a goat. It's fornication, if that makes sense. If your husband slept with a waitress at a restaurant, it would be Right, it would be fornication and moikia. Okay. All adultery is fornication, but not all fornication is adultery. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, sex with opposite sex would be both moikia and pornea. Sex with same sex. Pornea, correct, fornication. That's correct. Masturbation would be unknown. Uh, masturbation is in its own little world. Okay, and that is, I kind of try to stay away from it. It's not in the Bible. And so as a counselor, I handle it differently. Uh, if it's not a main problem for the person, uh, I don't focus on it that much. If it is a problem with them, then I kind of go there and handle that. But it's not in the Bible, so there's a lot of nuances to masturbation. Fantasy is always involved, and the type of fantasy affects the, for, the masturbation. And masturbation is also part of intercourse, and it's all it's it's very convoluted. So each case of that, I 
take on an individualized basis. That's what I'm saying. I guess what I'm saying. Uh, having an office affair is a is what? Oh, we don't know. It depends on if you're having an affair with somebody who is this, your same sex. It would be fornication. If it's an opposite sex, it would be moikia or adultery, right? Uh, remarriage would be an example of what? Well, again, it would depend on who you married. So if you came out of the closet and ran off with your boyfriend and you're a guy, it would be fornication, right? Right. If you ran off with your secretary at work, it would be right. Good. Good. Uh, let's go to Leviticus chapter 18 and look through one chapter that uh, is going to guarantee you in the future sometime they're going to ban the Bible in the United States. It's already started. California's right now starting to play around with it. And here's why. The Bible is a nasty book. It is not politically correct. And now in our society, since we have now gone that route, the Bible is now in deep trouble. Or so they think. The Bible is never in trouble. But it's going to get banned eventually here. It's going to take 10 or 15 or 20 years to do it. But that's that's the direction we're headed. I did a radio show on that one. But anyway, <clears throat> here's one of the chapters that's going to cause it. Because this is an incredibly politically incorrect chapter. And in our society, in most societies now, this kind of chapter is taboo. 100%. Uh, Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20. Terrible chapters for political correctness. You shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself with her. You shall not commit adultery. You uh, shall not lie with mankind or with womankind. It is abomination. Tobiah, morally disgusting. Okay. Now here, here the Bible's in deep trouble. You can't sleep with someone who is the same sex as you are. That's a sin. And you can send me an email on that one. There's nothing I can do about it. Remember, I didn't write the Bible, so there's no reason to get mad at me. <laughs> Lesbianism, homosexual, we'll go over that in a minute. It's all sinful, and here's how we got that idea. Yahweh came up with this on his own, and he didn't consult Mike. Neither shall you lie with any beast, okay? So most bestiality that I run into is usually licking. It's usually involving a pet, uh, usually a dog, and it's usually like grade school or junior high. And then as the person grows up, they stop it. But the problem is those kind of behaviors let in spirits. So then the, that behavior here manifests horribly there later in life. Okay? So that's an issue you have to deal with during deliverance if that is a issue in the person's past. Okay? Uh, Neither shall a woman stand before a beast. Or bah means to squat or lay down and spread out. Uh, that is unnatural, Jehovah said. These are all sins in the eyes of God. Okay? Uh, there's nothing I can do about it, and it's not my fault. I had nothing to do with it. That's just what it says. And I'm just repeating what it says. This is all sinful behavior here. Draws in demons, and it's just awful. This is Pompeii, the Las Vegas of the first century the volcano went off like the one in Hawaii only this one wasn't like the one in Hawaii that's a light duty one this one blew up like an atomic bomb and wiped everybody out in minutes everybody was dead now here's a brothel of people in a whorehouse so to speak right here that died instantly through that volcano eruption. Here's a painting in a brothel, giving you an idea what kind of stuff went on there. And then here's something really interesting. Here's a guy holding a demon, the head of a demon there. They knew all about demons back then. People that don't know about demons are people in the 21st century. They think it's just stuff in the movies. Back then, everybody knew demons were real. Now, this is really interesting. 
that whole city of Pompeii was excavated and all these brown spots see those those were sexual service places the whole town it was a coastal city and the whole town just thrived on the sex industry like Las Vegas like New Orleans different cities it was all big money imports exports and the sex trade was huge there these are ancient uh, carvings from antiquities 3,000 something years old illustrating that bestiality was practice in many civilizations and it was normal in some civilizations okay it's even normal now you can get bestiality porn uh, I think most of it comes out of Germany but it's still it's still here people uh, there are a few perverts that are very excited with that kind of stuff and there's still a market for it now it's always been with us bestiality's always been around it's just not as prevalent as uh, adultery and other sex sins Romans chapter 1 is another terrible chapter for the Bible uh, it's going to get it banned because there's no way to get out of this chapter Everybody tries to reword it and word it comfortably. God, but if you look at the Greek text, the Greek text just kills us. It's just so blatant. There's no way to get out of it. There's no way to sugarcoat it. Well, what happened was as humanity digressed into demonic perversion, God gave them up to uh, akatharsia and through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonoring their own bodies between themselves for this cause God gave them up to atomia pathos disgraceful passions their women changed the fusikas the physical use to that which is unnatural and the men leaving the fusikas natural physical use of the woman burned in lust for each other okay there, there isn't any way to get out of these verses this is talking about homosexuality men with men working that which is askimosune is morally indecent or morally inappropriate if you're having intercourse with somebody of the same sex uh, you're picking up demons and you're sinning against God there isn't any way to sugarcoat the thing or get out of it can you be delivered of that? Yes, but I'll tell you, let me uh, take a break here. Homosexual demons are like on steroids. They're monsters, and they do not come out like the demons we throw out here every week. They are nasty, and they are violent and vulgar. And unless the person is 100% on board with deliverance, uh, you can't get the demons out. If there's any sense in the person, any sense at all, that they don't want them gone, or there's something they like about it, or if they, the demons will catch just a little bit, and they won't come out. Then they and they fight. They're nasty. They'll fight you. They'll cuss you out. They'll yell at you. I've had homosexual demons yelling at me, and I go, "Whoa, you know, maybe I jumped the gun here. Maybe I need some more repentance." I don't like to get yelled at. Been married several times, know all about it. <laughs> Receiving in themselves the what? Plane. It's a delusion. And the United States is in a massive sexual perversion delusion. The whole country is deluded by Satan. That's how powerful he is. You're born that way. It's okay to do whatever you want as long as you're not hurting somebody else. You're fine. Wow. And he's got everybody believing it. Even the churches are buying it now. There's homosexual churches popping up everywhere. And the numbers of Christians who are gay are just exploding. Exploding. Okay? There are many Christians that are gay who do not practice it and beat it down and pray it down and fight it off, which is good. But they they still got those lust demons in there, so they still have those same sex attractions that drives them nuts. They suffer with it for years. They're constantly fighting it, and they hate it. And the demons are always telling them, "Hey, that's you. You're a disgusting person. Look, you've got desires for Harry. 
what's wrong with you? What are you pervert? The demons are always trying to condemn the person when they're doing it and they know they're doing it But they're trying to dump it on the poor person who has same-sex attraction So once I get them in a counseling session where I explain it to them that those are not their feelings and those thoughts of condemnation are not theirs and they do not come from God then you can kind of get a little breakthrough here and start coming back at the devil and beating him back But as long as a person sees himself as a scum bucket or they secretly hate themselves Because they have these desires. They don't ever tell anybody. They won't tell anybody. They won't go to the pastor or anybody It's too risky and embarrassing so they just suffer with it and then the urges they usually go like this you know the sexual desires kind of run in a cycle and the person prays like crazy or fast or reads the Bible. they go down and then they slip up and then it comes back and then they got to beat it back down again it's an up and down system and it drives the person nuts and it causes a lot of clinical depression and a lot of despondency and the demons know it so that's that's how they play it yeah it's a delusion plane is a delusion now the next big thing is trans that's going to sweep the country trans is our next deal and then eventually down the road 10 20 30 years uh, kitty sex is going to be considered normal they're going to come up with a theory of starting children at a much younger age into sexuality and that's going to be another big thing so the devil's not done here he's just getting started and he's going to drive this thing right to the gates of hell and if you know anything about him, you know he don't give up. Back in Romans 1 here, here more trouble. They did not like to retain God, God in their epignosis, in their recognition or understanding. They did not want to say, hey, you're right and we're wrong. That's what's happening now in our society. So we don't believe in this homosexuality is a sin so we're going to start our own church and serve the Lord that way and our God's okay with it it's basically what that's saying in a way yeah we're out the door so to speak so what happened God gave them up and this is a condition you can get into today it doesn't happen very often but if a person continues to keep on sinning and keep on receiving negative thoughts and keep on believing lies and fabrications at some point in time they're going to develop a reprobate mind and at that point you're the walking dead you cannot be saved again you cannot be helped they're so sick they can't receive any truth anymore at all it's over even though they're still alive happens all the time in mental institutions they're so sick you can't get one scrap of truth into them. And so God said, hey, this thing's got so bad, bang, I'm out the dope. And then boom, Noah. Yeah. You, to develop a reprobate mind, a mind that's rejected by God, you have to consistently of your own free will receive fabrications and lies and falsehoods and you have to avoid and reject truth that people give you as you go through that journey see you don't just wake up a reprobate mind no a reprobate mind is developed over time see so the person keeps receiving lies they're warned they're somebody tries to help them they stop that quit that no, and, and it, boom, they finally reach that point and they're gone. And you can't help them anymore. The demon, the devil just took over their mind. They're gone. I know someone, I believe that's what happened to them. Yeah, it, it does. It doesn't happen, you know, a lot. Yeah, I know, I believe it. Yeah, he's gone. Yep. As Paul said in Romans, you're the slave of the master you serve. If you keep receiving lies and negative thoughts, what was his name? Rick. Rick. If you're like Rick, okay? Rick Rick has a reprobate mind now, but he didn't have one two, two, three, four years ago. See, when Rick was here, right? 
yes, Rick had a per normal mind, functioning mind, but as the spirits begin to put lies and negativity into the brain, falsehoods, fabrications, as the person continues to receive those, those things then begin to take hold of the person. It's the law of sowing and reaping. And so the mind gradually goes under the control of the spirits. And at one point here, click, you can't get them back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Yeah, but that didn't happen overnight. See, that took time the demons can't just take your mind click you're gone Tuesday That's not gonna happen. You have to keep on sinning and Rejecting truth over a long period of time to develop a reprobate mind And uh, to do those things which are not a think of morally appropriate so they just kept doing it. They knew it was wrong and they kept doing it. What's the lesson here? Uh, you're not doing that. But if you're doing other things that you know are wrong and you keep doing it and you don't stop doing it and you already know you're wrong, eventually you will reach a point where you can't be healed anymore. And the only way to save those kind of people are trauma. So what I do is I turn them over to the Lord and I say father whatever you got to do crack them Because they won't listen unless they're broken And so along this trail here, I'll, I'll work with them. I'll say hey, you're headed for a Three alarm fire here. You better change you better and I warn them down the road and then he, like here. There's the car accident So now I've got a chance During a trauma phase where they'll listen the mind is shocked into an adjustment period see but if I see along this trail here that the more I talk to them the the more it's not working I stop talking to them because if you keep giving truth to someone who continues to willfully reject it you can help them get sicker does that make sense I know it sounds nuts but if you keep telling somebody Jesus loves them Pretty soon they'll develop a hatred for Jesus. So at this point in time, if you don't recognize this, you need to stop preaching to them. That's when Jesus said, "Don't throw your pearls." Yeah, he said, "Don't do that." Uh, Jesus, you offended all those Pharisees. He said, "Let them go alone. Let them alone. They're blind leading the blind." Okay, truth can only be received. When the person's ready to receive it, you can't force them to receive truth. So when the trauma hits down here, then you have a chance to make a move on that person. But this will go on for years until they're broken. And some people think being broken is bad. I rejoice when it happens. It's really hard to look at, but at least I've got a shot here. Of getting some truth into this person because they never change They're the same jacked up stoop They were six months ago six years ago. Good God, dude. When are you gonna stop and Change when are you gonna do it? Oh, I'm gonna do it. I Pretty soon the good Lord has to allow something to happen to them that causes them to refocus and change okay, and in some cases I've seen it's uh death But it's better for them to change before they die than to lead out the rest of their life and end up a Reprobate then then they go to hell So it's better to die here saved than become a reprobate and live another 50 years or a thousand years and then go to hell I'd rather die here personally Please don't Encourage yourself to help me with that. But that, what I'm talking about here, I'm talking about here is you're continuing to work with these spiritual idiots who do not receive truth and they will not change. Okay, so after a while, you have to stop working with them because you're making them worse.
then you got to turn them over to the Lord and wait for him to crack them When they get cracked then you move back in and You got a shot at saving them Okay, but if they're not going to do anything at some point you got to turn them over Okay Paul's the expert hey, I turn these guys over to Satan so they may learn not to blaspheme they wouldn't change they wouldn't stop he warned them he talked to him prayed for him he bent over backwards to help him and click they're not doing it so now he stopped praying for him he just let him go to the devil remember that yeah you think well that's that's not Christian it is Christian it's just that in our society Christianity is perverted but true Christianity is hey let these people go and let this happen well you're not very compassionate no actually you're more compassionate than the idiots who through a delusion keep trying to help the person they're in a delusion thinking that if you keep pouring truth into this person's mind they're going to change and in fact they already know through experience that they haven't changed and they know in their heart they're not going to change unless they're motivated to change and that motivation comes from back to the school of hard knocks car wreck sickness illness cancer uh, a loss of a job a some something tr something bangs into the person's life and then they're forced to change which is God's mercy in action it's mercy But you don't waste your your time and your energy and suck your soul out Continuously working with people who don't listen and don't change Brother Mike's a hard ass no brother Mike's not I read the Bible and If you keep working with people who don't listen you're actually hurting them Can I have a codependent mother say amen if you keep working with a jacked up kid you are helping the child go to hell. Come on and preach. I better go to the next slide. I'm in trouble here. Okay, what factors influence sexual desires? Well, believe it or not, that's a complicated issue, and the media has got it all jacked up. There's numerous factors here that you have to take into consideration in terms of human sexuality. So there's not one cookie cutter answer. But these are some of the main factors. Genetics is huge, okay? Some people are born different biological and chemical conditions, okay? Some people have a little higher sex drive. Some people have a little lower sex drive. Some it, it, diff, people are different. Uh, we're all products of Adam's fall. Nobody's born perfect. We're all flawed. A huge factor in homosexuality and lesbian and, and trans is what? Number two, huge childhood abuse, trauma, sinful trauma in childhood, huge factor in changing your sexuality. Some people pick up spirits through uh, deliberately acting out sexual activities. Okay, so this happens a lot. Uh, somebody living on the DL. Uh, they're actually heterosexuals. They have a Wife and kids, but when they're under certain influences of types of drugs or they're drunk or something they'll They'll uh, engage in homosexual activities just for the fun of it or the pleasure of it. They're not gay, but they're acting out in a gay fashion under certain circumstances uh, other people uh, Experiment with their sexuality. You know, they've I've seen this happen a lot. They have a uh, Three bad breakups and you know, I'm tired of men you know, Brenda looks good And they put around with her and suddenly a spirit enters and then now there's <coughs> Transfer over it, it happens all the time Okay uh, some people change their desire for sex depending on what kind of chemicals they're on. 
Okay, uh, for example, meth is a huge demonic lust machine. Almost everybody on meth, uh, particularly males, is hardcore into porn while they're high. A natural rush. These are all demons. And uh, generational sin is a huge factor. If you have a lot of child abuse up in this family and you have same-sex attractions and you have homosexuality, these spirits move down through the family tree, clicking into one person or another, here or there. So there's maybe a generational component to being gay or something. Okay. But the the main thing behind all of it is these guys here, they're unclean spirits, they're perversion demons, they usually enter the person's body through sin, or they come down through the family tree through other people's sin, and they get into the body and they start morphing the person's desires. They do the same thing with other sins. Greed. Lust for money, material things, pride, uh, politicians, they're all crooks and liars, but they've got these lust for power. That's the thing behind politicians. They're all demon infected liars. But the power rush is what they're focusing on. The demons push them. They want to be able to control people. They're power, power hungry. So these spirits cause all kinds of different kinds of lust. They're experts at it. Tonight we're just focused on the sensual part of it. Here's kind of how the process works. The spirit gets into the person's body when they're in the womb or they get in through some sin or child abuse or it could be grade school. It could be a molestation incident. It could be a rape. It could anything. You know, there's a million different things. But anyway, the spirit gets in the body before puberty and then they start to morph their sexuality as they go through puberty and the person has same-sex attractions or no sex desire at all something like that I will take a question or two there none okay oh nuts Uh, hold on just a second sweetheart uh, Somebody had a mic Can you oh okay. Thanks, sweetie Yeah, go on. Uh, Okay, so the reprobate mind um, How do you recognize I mean outside of the spirit, you know leading you and making you aware Like how do you recognize when somebody has reached that point? You know, you can have conversations and they're not hearing you or they don't want to hear what you got to say and they're just rejecting the truth. But how, I mean, you know, but at some point we've all rejected truth. So uh -huh. how do you know when you are speaking to somebody who's really at that point? Yeah, that's a good question. What happens in that case, this kind of a case here, is it's a, it's a long slide. So, like she said, everybody rejects truth. 100% of everybody. We, uh, they call them sinners. They're all rejecting truth, okay? But uh, at a certain point, which you, you can't say, that's it. It's a spiritual point. The person reaches a point of no return here. And there's usually, there's usually a hostility factor developing in this area here toward truth. It's an aggressive rejection of it because it continues to to get worse But her the answer to her question is no one knows There's a point inside the person's soul where they click here But you can see the signs and symptom of, of it this way And that's what I look at like the symptoms and signs it, you, If you just meet somebody there's no way to know if they have a reprobate mind You know you got to kind of know the person and work with them over a period of time. Yeah. Uh, so if that person uh, has no desire for God, then that's probably a, a place of no return. 
Uh, no, not necessarily. I mean, it's, it's you got to take a case by case basis. But some people uh, who aren't reprobates at all don't have any desire for God. You know. In fact, most people are like that. They don't have real have any real desire for God. That doesn't mean they have they have a reprobate mind. I guess you answered the question I was going to say. If I have a reprobate mind, and I'm in complete darkness. Can God reach into that darkness and pull me out? And also, a scripture that I read that said, uh, uh, a person that the eye is, it receives the sight, uh, receives the light. Uh, the scripture said something like, um, how dark it is, how dark that darkness is. Well, what does that scripture mean? Well, he said the light of the body is the is your eye okay so uh, yeah but yes yeah it, well it means that, that you could end up here it's possible to end up there in permanent darkness Well, they says his arm wax short that he cannot save, or his ear heavy that he cannot hear. No, it never is. But when you become a reprobate, you don't give a rat's fanny what God thinks. So no, there's no way for him. What's that? No, far from it. But uh, a reprobate is somebody who's antichrist. You want to listen? Oh, no, you're not. Re that's ridiculous. This guy's not even close to. Maybe I should have spent more time on that. You're not reprobates if you're here right now. I doubt it. I mean, geez. You sort of just answered my question, but uh, it's sort of tough to admit, but I almost kind of feel I could be on that path. No, uh, no, you don't feel that. You are on that path. You're slowly going there, but you're not, not here yet by a long shot, but you're headed that way. Yeah, I understand that certainly I don't want to be. So if you go east from here, you're headed to New Jersey. <laughs> you, it takes a while to get there. Okay? So as a person keeps rejecting truth, and they're given one chance after the other, that's why so many times over the years I've talked about how damaging church is. Because if you go to church all the time, and you hear truth all the time, you actually get sicker. Because if you hear the truth all the time and you don't do it, you actually get sicker. If that makes any sense. That's why people sit in church and they're sicker than dogs, they can't get healed, and then a transient comes in and walks out with a major miracle. He's not all churched out like the people sucking the air out of the pews. Because he hasn't had all this truth, he's rejected over the years. Hey Mike. See? Mike. Are you, are you are you talking about believer? Are you talking about believers as well as unbelievers? Yeah, either, either one. Yeah, you can keep rejecting truth. In fact, people that go to church, a lot of them are believers. Not all of them are false converts by by any stretch. And when you but, say they reject truth, yeah, in other words, they what, what hear exactly truth. You, how do you? What do you? They, mean? they hear truth and they don't do anything about it. They don't okay. act on it. Huh? They don't They're, act on it. They just keep listening. See, that's what Paul said. He says uh, in Timothy, he says, some of these silly women go from house to house. They're ever learning, but they're never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, so they keep getting sicker. See, so a reprobate is someone who keep telling them truth and they keep rejecting it. So they go down this slide to New Jersey. So to speak. You follow that? I mean, it's if uh, it's better it, as as right. Communion can actually make you sick, but like like Paul said, you know, sometimes the more you know, the worse it is for you. Because on Judgment Day, you have to give an account of what you know. See, that's why it's so unbelievably dangerous to come here. 
because if I tell you the truth right in your face, which you're not going to get at church, you've got a bad problem now because you heard unadulterated truth right in front of you. If I go to the mega church, I'm going to get a watered down, happy go lucky fanny pat, which is not hardcore truth into the person's right in the face. Okay? So getting the truth can be revolutionary if you receive it. It can be damnable if you reject it. So God gave them up to a reprobate mind after giving them truth, 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 and they kept going, screw, screw you. So going to church can actually damage the person because they become systematically desensitized to truth and it doesn't register with them anymore. Oh, I know I need to stop smoking. <laughs> Jack, you've been told 5,000 times you're going to stop smoking. Lord, help him out. Lung cancer. God help him out. Now he's got lung cancer. Does that work every time? No, but it works most of the time. You know, you might have a... What's that guy that was in Roadhouse? Patrick Swayze. You know, he wouldn't stop smoking after he got cancer. Okay, but that's a small percent. Most people, when they are turned over to Satan, get the message, and they stop. And there's a few that won't. They're hell-bent to go to hell, period. No angel or God or anything is going to stand in their way. They're going to hell, period. And if that's your choice, you can do that. Nobody's going to stop you. Yeah. Did, did somebody going to church, you know, regularly um, helps to maintain your strength and maintain your change if you are changing? True. It doesn't do you any good if you don't change. A person that's changing, though, to, in her question there, is not what we're talking about. A person who's changing is receiving truth. So they're not going down the slide to reprobate. They're actually trying to like the stock market, work their way up. See? So she's right. Church helps that person, but it damages the other person. Yeah, uh, that uh, the truth that they're rejecting is that about their sin, about how they're living and the sin, uh, besetting sins especially. Sure. Oh, absolutely. Okay. No doubt. Uh, the way I took Romans 1 was the guy that I mentioned earlier was living a gay lifestyle his whole life and progressively got worse. He was very intelligent and all that and, you know, uh, talented with what he did and just his mind has gone angry at, but anyway. But that's the way I took Romans 1. It's just you live the lifestyle of <coughs> sin, basically, and God just turned you over after you don't come to the truth of anything else. I'm sure people told them the truth, the gospel. But. That's right. You know, if you keep rejecting yeah. truth, you bang another nail in your coffin. You know, if anybody's ever been around an addict, I mean, there they are. Their, their mama told you not to do it. Daddy told you. Everybody told you. And boom, now they're a full-blown addict. So what is what is God's blessing for you? Jail. Counselors call it hitting a bottom. Codependent mothers try to keep the child on their way to a reprobate mind. But when the trauma sets in, God's mercy... That takes it out of the codependent mother's hands. And the mother who's killing the child, thinking they're helping them, they live in a delusion, are actually killing the child. But the trauma resets. It's like rebooting your computer in a way. So trauma can be your asset when working with people. Continually giving them truth can actually hurt them. 
Floyd, Mike, same person. Uh, I used to be really dogmatic about, I don't think there's a gauging. What do you think of that? I mean, either you're either male or female or born with the, what, what do you have? But I don't think anyone is born gay. Well, I don't know what your thought is. But now that we're living in the fall world, I don't know. I used to be really dogmatic about that, but I'm not so dogmatic about it anymore. What do you think? No, there's no gay. Technically, there's no gay gene, but there are pre predisposing factors in your genetic tree. It could be witchcraft. It could be child abuse. It could be lust demons, there could be other things hitting the person either in the womb or as a baby or as something else uh, that would affect those things as they before they go through puberty. These spirits try to morph their sexuality. See, and like, the, like in Mark chapter 7, when Jesus said, uh, the, the disciples came to him, nine of them, and they said, why couldn't we cast that deaf and dumb demon out? He said, because of your unbelief. Uh, they were trying to cast the demon out. It wouldn't come out. The scribes were arguing with them. All of a sudden, they were doubting. That thing's not coming out. When it saw Jesus, there wasn't any of that doubt situation. So bang, the thing came out. Then he says to them something really interesting. This kind goes out, but by prayer and fasting. Well, the Greek word for kind there was really interesting. Genea is the Greek word. It means this generational spirit. So this monster came down through the family tree. That's why Jesus was asking him questions. He said to the father, how long has this been going on? He wanted information. He wasn't asking the father a pop quiz. He was gathering information for himself so he knew what kind of a spirit he was facing. See, Jesus, brilliant to say the least. So he says, when, this, when did this happen to me? Had happened to the kid and the guy goes since he was a child well the Greek word there is uh, uh, padian it means infant so this had Jesus then knew this thing had come down through the family tree so he says to the disciples later this is a generational spirit I got some information from the dad now did he already know that information he, he may have through the gift of knowledge but he said it so we could read it and help us later. So it was a teaching tool. It didn't mean he was ignorant. It meant he was trying to help me out 2,000 years later here at the Deliverance Center is what he was doing. Hold on a minute. Okay, so the prayer and fasting, is that the, the son who was supposed to do the prayer and fasting or the people that were praying for him? The people praying for him had unbelief. And the prayer and fasting was for the unbelief so that you can get the generational spirit out because those spirits are so steroidized, they won't come out if you have doubts. So you got to be on your game to get out a homosexual demon or lesbian demons or deaf and dumb spirits or mental retardation spirit these demons are these things are monsters and if you have any doubt at all they'll call your bluff on it well that went well <laughs> so anyway they get in the body and they work their way down now be very careful when somebody dies in your family. I just had a recent counseling session on this exact thing. Demons leave the body at death. Uncle Sam, Aunt Blabby, they leave the body and they stay in the same family tree that they're assigned in. So they hunt for another opening in that family tree. So somebody dies and then somebody else starts to develop weird symptoms. Okay, it came from the dead body. It's usually the ones that are devastated by the death or or angry at God over the death or there's some kind of opening there The spirit gets into them and now they've got a screwed up life ahead of them So these generational spirits will develop a pattern in your family and you'll see this pattern Clicking down in your family. You got a bunch of dummies in your family 
a bunch of dropouts, a bunch of idiots, a bunch of criminals, a bunch of addicts, a bunch of alcoholics. You see this pattern moving down through your family. Those are spirits moving down the family tree, showing you a pattern of sin that they are promoting. Yeah. Breast cancer is a very common one. <clears throat> Incest you'll see incest in some families not a lot, but you'll see it there Divorces that kind of thing How does generational sin work all right, let's take a quick look and you show it's so clearly illustrated here in the Word of God for our benefit <clears throat> Here you see uh, sexual perversion spirits, okay King David uh, took Bathsheba, committed adultery and murder. Then you notice these same spirits started to raid the family. Can't you notice that? Amnon rapes his half sister. Absalom murders Amnon for raping his sister. Uh, Adonijah wants to marry one of King David's wives, which was uh, forbidden under the law. So that would be technically considered incest. So Solomon killed him. Then Solomon becomes the king of adultery. He's got 600 wives and 300 concubines, and God only knows what on top of that. And he dies in chuck full of demons and in misery and wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. The point of the illustration is, can you see the pattern here? There's a little pattern going down there, and those are spiritual patterns. Here's lying spirits. You see a little pattern happen to notice that Abraham's lying about his wife Isaac's lying about his wife Rebecca and Jacob's lying about Stealing the thing from Esau Rebecca died in a miserable life uh, Jacob's sons lied like crazy and told him that Joseph had been eaten by bears or something again lying the lying spirits come down your family tree and if you start lying up here you'll see a bunch of your family members who are also liars same thing same demons lying spirits uh sex addicts well you can see those in in the bible and sex addiction believe it or not is as bad or worse than heroin addiction sex sex addicts are in deep trouble it's a super powered addiction and they'll do it almost right to their death. Solomon was a massive sex addict. Samson, he died because of his sexual addiction. His parents tried their best to get him to stop it. Hey, why don't you marry one of these Jewish girls who love Yahweh? What, what is your problem, dude? No, I like the hot babes with bootalicious. And the guy ended up with no eyes and debt. It cost him his life. And sex, ad sex addicts, man, you, it can cost you your life. Any addiction can, actually. America is massively addicted to sex, but believe it or not, I want you to know something. <clears throat> you might think that you're only one person and you don't amount to much, but believe it or not, you and the Holy Ghost can cause incredible ripples if you turn your life completely over to the Lord. You can become a societal monster and make a huge dent in society. Conversely, if you do the same thing to the devil, and turn your life over to him, he will make you a societal monster. Check this out. America is addicted to sex from sea to shining sea. It was caused by only three people. Three servants of Satan spread sex addictions all across the United States of America. Here they are. Kinsey started his research, and it was picked up by Masters and Johnson after that. And what they did was without going into all the details, they reduced a human being to an animal. And sexuality of a human is the same as the sexuality of an animal. They were just uh, studying the different variances of this animal over a leopard, a goat, or whatever. There was no God. There is no God. You're an animal, and you have sexual desires interests and so on and so they went into extensive research about normalizing sexual sin to them there was no sin of any kind there's no sin of sex there's no god as long as 
you're doing something sexually that's not hurting someone else or against their will anything's okay to these guys and then the king of Hodal, this guy a modern day King Solomon Hugh Hefner came along and started Playboy magazine which opened a floodgate of lust demons floating through the United States this guy just died recently and I'd hate to see where he is right now but you can be a great person for God just one person that's all through the Bible it's all through the Bible one person sometimes or a small group that went with the Holy Ghost became great if you sell yourself out right you can do the same with the devil this guy Hugh Hefner unbelievable it opened the floodgate to all kinds of other uh, softcore porn magazines and swept sex all over the country there used to be Playboy clubs years ago back in the 70s all around the United States they don't have them in fact Phoenix had one downtown where was that one Central. yeah I was on down on Central yeah I heard about it uh, actually I heard about it from him but anyway this guy spread sex and again there's no God and there's no sin it's just whatever you want to do it doesn't matter what it is okay now he didn't go to pedophilia because that requires prison time people don't like to go to prison generally speaking and notice I didn't say everybody but he sure didn't want to go to prison so they left pedophilia out of it but went with everything else whatever you want to do if it feels okay you go ahead and do it and right now our society is massively sexed out Sex is celebrated everywhere. New Orleans is huge during Mardi Gras. That's all sex. It's amazing. Drugs, rock and roll, it's everywhere. This is the most perverted event in the United States. It's in San Francisco in September called the Folsom Street Fair. They shut down a certain area of town. They have a giant parade and open sex and right out in front of everybody. It's unreal. Here it is, Pompeii. In America there it is Las Vegas you happen to notice those brown things that was the same thing those are sexual service centers just like they had in Pompeii the whole town is sexually uh, everything sex there prostitution is illegal there technically but here's how they do it you uh, sign up at an escort service hi I'm Sally from Iowa okay come on in hon now listen, sign this document and you, you sign this and you agree you are not going to have intercourse with these clients. You can go dance, you can sit on their face, you can party all night, whatever you want to do with them, but no sex. Sign it. So the, so the escort services get out of it legally, but they all know that's why they're going to the hotel. It's all sex. Okay? But that's how they beat the system. And they got huge vice squads in Las Vegas. They're always hunting for these people. They'll never stop them. All right. How'd that section go? Any comments or questions there? Anybody feel like hitting me? If you do, uh, Arnie, can you get ready to come out? You. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm starting to get scared. All right, let's switch over to Kelly's area of expertise. These are sweeping the United States. Back in the 1950s, nobody ever heard of these things, and they weren't even around. But they've been in Africa since time immemorial. A spirit spouse is a, a special lust demon that gets in your body and claims you as their mate, as their spouse. The demon takes you and makes you their husband or wife. And then they ward off other prospects. Uh, they call them marine spirits in Africa. 
and they're extremely dangerous and uh, Here are dwarf demons right here. I didn't even know these existed I went on a missions trip to Africa one time and these dwarf demons uh, come to the family and the way it works apparently is if the family or the mother agrees to let the father uh, have incest with the children the dwarf spirits will help take care of them so they have they bless them with money and material things and food and different things and it's all supernatural the pastors were telling me stories that you know I couldn't hardly believe uh, money would mysteriously appear somewhere but they have to agree to let the father dabble with the kids dwarf demons or they're, they're incest spirits anyway these spirits uh, get into the person's body and um, Kelly has a, a teaching on this we just did that not too long ago ah when was that January, January. we had January it's on it's on the uh, YouTube really good teaching she knows more about this than I do but anyway if you have a spirit spouse uh, if you have any of these symptoms you probably have one and they're prevalent in highly sexualized societies like ours where there's a lot of sex sin, there's a lot of spirit spouses. Back in the 50s, no, there wasn't a lot of sex sin at all. So the 50s was another world. Times have changed. Uh, spirit spouses are tricky. They'll encourage you to masturbate all the time. They don't like you getting involved with other relationships. But then after you masturbate, they dump a bunch of guilt on you. So it's a continuous siege of sorrow and misery and loneliness and broken relationships and divorces and oh God, it's just awful. Then they start spiritually attacking you. You have sleep paralysis, weird sex dreams, nocturnal orgasms, erectile dysfunction. I mean, they just they're blasting away at the person, destroying their personal life, destroying their sex life because they are very possessive. Jealous and possessive. In Hollywood, there it's called ghost sex. That's what they call it there. And these uh, celebrities have all given interviews about uh, ghost sex. These are uh, marine spirits or spirit spouses that come in at night. They fondle your genitals. Sometimes they have intercourse with you. Some some of them rape you. Some of them just stand by your bed. Some of them just kind of float over your body and giving you a sensual. And these people here welcomed them in and went, and went along with the, the orgasms and the relationship. That's what kept them coming back. And so they've all testified. These people have all testified in the news media about ghost sex. All right, any questions there? Uh, if you have a lo lot of information about it, check Kelly's video out. It's really good. Yes, sir. Is a um, marine spouse the same thing as is a marine spouse the same thing as an incubus or a succubus demon? Uh, no, uh, they can be though. Uh, incubus and succubus demons sometimes aren't spirit spouses. They're just powerful lust demons that attack you in bed at night, but they kind of do the same thing. Uh, so. Any of those three are certified nightmares. Yeah. All right. And then let's go to another issue that the devil uses soul ties. Okay. A soul tie usually occurs when a person's spirits are similar to the spirits in another person. These are negative soul ties. So if your spirit demons are similar to their demons, greed, sex, violence, whatever it is, uh, gangsters, for example, have have these spirits of murder. And so there's a similarity between us as gangsters. You're a killer. I mean, so you and I are in the same gang, so to speak. Uh, they get you to these these soul ties get you to be like quail. And you covey around with other people with similar demons. So a soul tie spirit can pop up instantly 
when you first meet somebody and you have this instant connection to them in some way Okay, if you don't have a soul tie to them if the spirits are completely different sometimes you have an instant Yuck factor when you meet somebody. Ooh, I don't like that guy. Why not? I don't know. Well, you don't even know the guy. Give him a chance. I don't know. Something bothers me. Or it goes the other way. Wow, did you see her? Oh, man. You feel like an instant pull. And the demons tell you, what's love? Wow, you guys are soulmates. Ooh, that's nice <laughs> Six months later suicide violence domestic uh. Well, anyway, that's the trick see and it's called falling in love at first sight and this this literally happened to me in 19 uh, 1992 I think it was It actually happened to me so I, I know exactly how this works. I walked into my office at this company I was working for. No, it wasn't 92. Strike that. No, it's 88. 88. And I wasn't uh, self-employed then, so I walked into my this company I was working for as a counselor. I was a rehab counselor. And they had hired a temp from somewhere. And I walked in and took a look at this gal, and that was it. I mean, clunk. And it took me thousands of dollars and 10 years to get rid of that woman. <laughs> <laughs> I am not making that up. Thousands. I spent thousands of dollars on that woman. I mean, I could not keep my hands off. Of, I mean, it was an instantaneous. My demons and her demons hand in a glove click and I was hooked. I mean it was unbelievable You try and break up with them and they get back. It's a battered wife syndrome soul tie Everybody tells you don't go back to him. Oh, I won't Boop, they're back over there next weekend Soul tie the spirits pulling you in for another beating Does anybody don't raise your hands, but you know what I'm talking about. There's a question <laughs> What is the difference between the soul and the spirit that you mentioned? Well, that's a long Bible study, but the spirit manager where the Holy Spirit lives and that's where you become a born-again Christian your soul is where your emotions come out of So the demons are working your emotions love Anger frustration passion whatever it all comes out of your soul See so a soul tie for a romance if that's a particular case like it was with me in 88 I just took a look at this chick and I could not believe it. Something hit. Something hit. I was I flipped over this chick. It was instant. We were instant chemistry. You ever heard those terms? Watch that. If you got instant chemistry with somebody, double check where you're going. All right, let's go to divorce. This is another typical symptom of a spirit spouse. By the time I see the person, they're usually in their 50s, late 40s, early 60s, and they've got a trail of broken relationships. So that's the first thing I look at in a counseling session. And then I start thinking maybe there's a spirit spouse involved in. But in America, the divorce rate is about, thereabouts, 52%. The actual divorce rate is like around 38 after you factor in reconciliations on remarriages so statistically it kind of runs there but it has since dropped or stabilized about seven or eight ten years ago because everybody stopped getting married and they started everybody kind of living together so the statistics are skewed now because they don't have any research on live-ins but the live-in breakup rate was always higher than the divorce rate. If you're just living with somebody, it's a lot easier to boogie. The bottom line is it's continuous breakups going on with these spirit spouses. They're constantly breaking. They're constantly keeping you from love. They turn you into an old maid. You can't find anybody. Then the fear demons jump in with them 
and then they tell you oh my god, you're gonna die alone You're you're, you're not you're not gonna find anybody. You're not gonna find love. Oh geez your husband's leaving you Oh, they're cheating on you somebody's been and you get all these paranoia issues starting to develop and in 2010 I got this survey for the top 10 reasons for divorce to give you an idea how things are changing porn is now in the top five 20 2017 but here were the top five reasons for uh, divorce and then here's the second five this was this was in 2010 why people get divorced and the Christian divorce rates the same as secular there's no difference it's not lower because you're a Christian it doesn't help now in 2017 I found this survey which I thought was interesting lawyers divorce lawyers uh, did the survey on the top eight reasons that uh, you can spot that predict a divorce and I thought that was interesting because these guys are the experts. If anybody knows about divorce, it's divorce lawyers. I thought it would go to the source. And so this was their list. If you see that in your relationship now or your parents or somebody's relationship at church and you see these factors, there's a probability that's going to end up in divorce. All right. Uh, shall I start this? All right. Now, let me preface this by saying nobody has all the answers, including me. So I'm only going to share you, share with you what we know. And then if we don't know it, I'll just put a caveat on it and then you can figure it out on your own Because there's some strange nuances in the system that uh, has caused some problems Let's take a look at uh, Divorce, okay uh, The word divorce is in the Bible King James Bible, only once and it's it shouldn't even have been used but it's the Greek word apaluo, and it means to send someone away. There's the dope. Go out the dope. Leave here. Go out the dope. There's a second concept. It's divorce papers. You can divorce someone here and then you can formally divorce them, which is the normal pattern. The couples get divorced here first, one or both, and in a situation. And then later on, the formality of it typically occurs Okay, so in Arizona as in Israel back then you have to go through a paperwork process to get divorced You can't just say I'm divorced You will end up in jail In the same way Israel had a paperwork process where they allowed for divorce Okay. And it was there was only grounds for divorce in ancient Israel for one thing, which we don't know what it is. The Hebrew word is confusing, but we do know it has something to do with the physicality of the wife. We know that for sure. So there's all kinds of speculation about 
what that was. And it looks like it's leaning toward, I'm trying to use this uh, description, I'm picking my words here. That'll keep me out of trouble. Some of you don't know how to pick your words and you live miserable lives. <laughs> don't raise your hands. There's, there's confusion over this, but in the Old Testament, it was pointing towards something wrong with the woman's genitals. We're not exactly sure what it was talking about. So the probability is they either weren't a virgin or they had damaged genitals or they had a genetic condition or something. But anyway, whatever it was, the husband was legally allowed to give the wife back to the family and, re and, and get back the dowry and payment he had made for the woman. Okay? But he had to give paperwork formally so that she could remarry. And so that's Jehovah set that system up uh, knowing it's a flawed system based on sin, but he had to do something because their society would have collapsed had the husband said, hey, there's something wrong with you. I don't like you. Get out of my house. So now you got all these people running around. They're not living with their spouse anymore, but they're not technically divorced. So the whole system collapses. So Jehovah said, I got to set up a system here of organizing the nation of Israel so that this thing can function. So Moses said, I'm going to allow you to divorce your wives, but it's not for it's not because their feet stink or they don't dress properly. It has to be something serious related to something about the woman. I mean, not the hair color. I mean, something serious about her sexuality. They're, they're not a virgin. They said they were a virgin. And so on. And then if the husband claimed she wasn't a virgin, there was another process to go through in court to prove that she was a virgin and that kind of thing there, now, which I don't want to get into uh, tonight. But anyway, there was a system set up. So now, in light of that, Jesus gets asked questions about that system because he's Jewish and the questioners are all Jewish. And Jesus, the lawgiver, has changed the law on divorce. And he changed it. He gave the first law. Now he's changing the law. And so he's fielding questions from Jews about this law. So that is, <clears throat> I'm trying to set this up. It's not working. Now look, this word means put away in the King James Bible. And in one, one, one verse has it as divorce, which it shouldn't have been. But put away is a good description. Apaluo means if a man puts away his wife, get out of here. Go. I don't like you for whatever reason. Well, the Pharisees and the scribes had changed the word of God, as you know, and they had perverted it, as they Jews always do. They pervert God's word. And they said, well, there's other reasons for divorce. And so they took Jehovah's commandment and they put in other things. That's why the Bible so... Uh, such a stickler on this is what God's word said. You don't take from it and you don't add to it That's going to cost you your soul what Jehovah says what the Holy Ghost says is Laws and that's God and in, if you don't like it you lump it 
You can see why my YouTube numbers are down. <laughs> Here's how it works. Okay, there it is. There's the scriptures for you. Let me move on here quickly. I'm wasting too much time. Matthew 19, the Pharisees came to Jesus, tempting him. Now they're trying to get him to step on the previous law that Jesus himself had given. He was the great lawgiver. Is it lawful for a man to get, the, get out the dope? His wife, for any reason, any reason. See, they're setting him up here. And then he says, didn't you read what the Bible says before the law was given? Before I gave the law on divorce, here's my original law in Genesis 2, right? God, I made them male and female, and a father leaves mother. Okay, any mama's boys here tonight? We're going to pray for you. You cut your mother and your dad. And you go to your wife and stop running back to your parents. Causes all kind of divorce issues. It causes counseling issues. <laughs> your parents are secondary. Your wife or husband is primary. And if you jack that order up, you are three things. Screwed, blued, and tattooed. <laughs> That's all Latin. I've got skills nobody can believe, including myself. It says, proskalao, glued. You leave your parents, according to God, and you are now glued to your spouse. And you are only one person now. See that? You're glued to the person. Look at that. I have two hands. If I put a bunch of super glue on this sucker, and I go like that, I'm in trouble tonight. Now I've only got one hand. Okay? The wife is driving me home. <laughs> when you get married, you are... <laughs> Yahweh said, Jesus said, back in Genesis, two or one, okay? <clears throat> They're not two anymore. <laughs> Blue. They're one. So, therefore, what God joined together, what he was really saying, what, what the system I set up originally, is what he's actually saying. <laughs> that system's still in play. That was before I gave the Moses law, trying to settle down these crazy Jews in Israel to keep the society from collapsing. I set up this divorce system to keep the thing afloat. If you put super glue on your hand, be careful. Has anybody ever spilled super glue? Oh, you got problems. <laughs> this stuff works. And never glue or use super glue naked. <laughs> Don't. Take a little extra time, put some clothes on, and then work with super glue. Don't just rush out there. Holy smoke. Grade school. Now, Matthew 19. <coughs> he then says, now he's changing the old law. Jesus changes it. It's a new covenant, not the old. Whoever shall put away his wife except for pornea and marries another commits muikia. We went over that at the beginning of the seminar. What is he saying there? The grounds for divorce now have expanded from the old system. It could be fornication, which is all kinds of issues. Brother Mike, my husband won't get off the chat room. Oh, that's that's risky right there because if it's sex chat or flirting or wantonness, what that's fornication. That's grounds for Brother Mike, he's on porn every night. Whoa, red flag. That's 
grounds for what? Woof. Pornea is grounds for divorce. Okay, don't send me an email. I'm only reading it. And if you marry another, that is adultery. Whoever marries her that is put away commits muikia adultery. Now we're running into problems. Okay? So there's some confusion here in that this is apaluo. It's not saying the person is divorced. It's saying that they may have been shipped out. What am I saying here? There's not enough information in this verse for me to perfectly expand on this concept so we're gonna have to dig a little deeper and see if we can come up with something to help correct Jesus said all men cannot receive this except whom it is given he's talking about grace okay Matthew 19 so he says eunuchs what is a eunuchus it's it means to be castrated but here Jesus is using it in an expanded concept where castration is spiritual. Okay. A eunuch in the Old Testament literally was castrated because they couldn't have, the king wouldn't have serv house servants hanging around the princess and all the kids. They didn't want them getting in trouble. It says here, some people are born eunuchs correct and that's true some people have congenital disabilities or something wrong with their sex organs or sex drive or something and they're not functioning properly when they're born then he says some people are made eunuchs of men right true three some make themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Now, is God telling you to serve God? You got to go out and cut your testicles off. No, He's talking about spiritually. You may decide that you want to live a celibate life, like priests, for example. They go, they come in there say, "Oh, I'm going to be celibate," and they're not. But then I'm going to be celibate for God, so to speak. That's what He's talking about. Okay. Don't get me started on the priest thing, because that's ugh, that's really frustrating. They don't understand what they're doing. That is a rotten, perverted. Stop. Back here, he is able. It says here, you can voluntarily restrict your own sexuality to serve God, and that's what you have to do if you're going to be a minister. Not if you're a TV preacher. No, you're out hosing everybody. But if you're a real minister of God and you're married, you only sleep with her. Okay. Now if you're a TV preacher, that's that's a different set of rules. But a real man of God. Is going going to volunteer or they may decide to be celibate For Christ and that happens a lot, right? And there's nothing wrong with it That's what Jesus is saying. Hey These things happen and there's nothing wrong with it. So you got if you have grace to receive that go ahead If you got grace to receive that go ahead It's all good. He's not saying don't get married Right Sexual laws under the law of Moses were for the most part transferred to the new covenant. Here we go uh, Some of them were not however okay. If you use your lose your virginity before you were married you were stoned to death That's been eliminated uh, If it wasn't eliminated this place would be empty tonight now. Let's go to number two If a male had sex with a married woman uh, we call them cougars They were stoned That's been eliminated If you had sex with a virgin who was engaged to someone else Then they both got stoned 
that's been canceled if a man rapes a an engaged virgin out in the country see uh, country folks are different than city folks <laughs> If you did that, the female was released, but the male was stoned in case of a rape. In our society, uh, they go unreported. You know, the hassle of the female reporting it and all the things they, they go, oh, you know, I'm going to let it go. Most rapes, pe people get away with. There, when you got caught, it cost you your life. <coughs> Uh, males raping an unbetrothed virgin uh, There was a fine for it So if she was engaged to somebody else so to speak That's the death penalty if she's not engaged and you just took her date rape whatever it was You had to pay a fine and then You had to marry them and you were not allowed to divorce them. That was your punishment So the theory there was if you're going to be a screwed up psycho Rape somebody you really like. All right, now number six. If you slept with your mother-in-law, which is why King Solomon killed his brother, correct? Many years later. That was execution. Okay. Now, you can see why sexual sin is so uh, hardcore with Jehovah because we're going to get to it in a minute. You transfer spirits from one person to the other when you're committing sexual sins demons transfer into other people's bodies That's why prostitution was such a no-no Everyone who's a prostitute has demons everybody that goes to a prostitute or a whore transfers one in That's how demons spread they transfer through society through sexual sin now in the New Testament here adultery has changed in the Old Testament you had to actually sleep with the person you heard it said of old time you shall not commit adultery Jesus said Matthew 5 I say to you whoever looks on a woman to lust after her epithumeo means to develop ardent passions for someone see that's what happened to me in 1980 I walked in from an appointment there she is sitting there and I developed in a very short period of time instant lust for that girl okay even if I even before I touched her I had already committed the sin of adultery in the Old Testament you could not do that you could lust after somebody from morning till night, but that wasn't adultery until you took the person. See, the woman that got caught in adultery, they brought her to Jesus, threw her down in front of him. She had been caught doing it. See, she wasn't doing it in her heart. They actually saw her doing it, which was the Old Testament law. Now the New Covenant has changed. This is why pornography is grounds for divorce and is adultery. Pornography was not adultery in the Old Testament. It is adultery in the New Covenant. It has been said, whoever puts away his wife, once again, Apoluo ships out, sends out, get out. Let her also give her the papers, like Moses said, right? If you're going to kick her out, you got to kick her out with papers. Saying we're divorced, like we do here in Arizona. But I'm telling you, the law has now changed. If you ship your wife out for any other reason other than fornication, okay, you cause that person to commit adultery. How would that be? Well, that's hard to describe. You know, I can describe you several ways. Uh, 
I boot you out and you marry this person. Muy kia. Uh, I boot you out. Uh, you start lusting for that person. Muy kia. You never sleep together, but it's still it's still adultery, right? Uh, I boot you out and you sleep with your girlfriend. Well, that's fornication there. He didn't say here, boot out with papers. Notice that? So you can assume it includes papers, correct? You could assume that in reading the text. And you could not assume it. Whoever marries, now we're talking about a legal ceremony. Now, he says marry, not live together. Whoever marries her, that is, mistranslated, divorce, apaluo, shipped out, thrown out, commits adultery. The question, is he talking about someone that was shipped out and gets married while they're still married to the old spouse? Or is he talking about someone that's shipped out and divorced from the old spouse? <laughs> okay, now I already said I didn't have all the answers. Remember why I said that? Okay. I frequently say that. I mean, it looks like I've got all the answers just based on the way I dress, but I, I don't. I don't. A little too much laughter there. Now let's let's go through this together, like we're friends. Let's pretend we're friends. You get your unsaved person. You're not born again, right? You get married here. You get divorced. You get married again. Your spouse dies. You get married again. You get divorced. You do this and that and that, and then, then you die. There you go. You drop dead. What happens to you? Everything happens to you. You go to the great white throne judgment. You're judged for not only all your marriages and your divorces, which are now sins, because the first marriage was your marriage there, and then you got divorced. If it wasn't for fornication and you did incompa incompatibility, that's a sin. You got remarried. There that was a sin So the sinner then has to face all these sins on their own they died in their sins They didn't have the blood remove them of Christ So they're stuck with their sins and you've got to take them into eternity and therefore when you go to eternity You're accountable for them. You have to handle your sin without the blood of Christ. They're on you If the blood of Christ has washed you clean they're on him and you're sinless So here in this instance this person's in deep trouble and has to give account of all these crazy marriages Elizabeth Taylor Right eight marriages She died and she's in deep trouble Okay, so let's go to the next one Let's say you're born again. All right, so you're you're a sinner here and you get married uh, Usually it's usually when you're young you have an early marriage, you know teenage 20s something like that Right, and then you get divorced. Uh, it's for irreconcilable differences. Uh, his feet stink. She leaves. He goes, "Well, screw her," and he gets married again. Okay, that's a sin. Let's say he does that fifty times. Well, he gets born again here. All these marriages and divorces are gone now. Just like all the other sin the person committed is gone. So you got married 50 times and they were all sinful marriages except the first one, right? And so you got saved. So now God forgave you for all those marriages. They've been washed in the blood. They've, they've disappeared. It's like you were never married. It's like you never sinned. Not only were your marriages and divorces forgiven, but everything was forgiven. Everything you did. And you did a lot of rotten stuff. 
I know some of you and it was super rotten You were all forgiven That's how powerful the blood is. It's all gone That's incredible that's the glorious That's the glory of the gospel. That's an incredible story Well, it doesn't stay that way now, let's say you got saved here and you said, you know what? I'm going to marry again. So I, I got married here. Okay. That's legal to do. Right? So now this marriage is your New Testament covenant marriage. You married for X amount of years and you dropped dead. What happens to you? You go to the judgment seat of Christ. There's no sin there. Your marriage was fine. Get her done. No guilt, no shame, nothing. God forgave you, and you got married again, which is fine, and bingo. It's all good. Okay. Let's say you're a born-again Christian, and you got married here, and then you got divorced uh, because you guys fought too much over money. And then you got saved here. That marriage was forgiven. So you say, well, I'm going to get married again. Okay. And you make a terrible mistake, which I've seen a hundred times in counseling session. You marry somebody that you shouldn't have married. Okay. You fall in love with some hot guy who's packing. And you go, Wow. I'm going to convert him to Christ. And that was the that was the demons talking to you. That they got that delusion in your mind because they wanted you to marry that loser. Okay. So, oh, I, I'll win him to Christ. I got it. Well, the Bible says the opposite. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Okay, that's marriage is going to hell in a handbasket 90% of the time. Out of desperation, I do wait for an amen once in a while. Now, here we go. Now, let's check it out together. <laughs> this, this is bad. Let me take a breath here. Let's say you guys don't get along anymore, and everything's going great. You stay married, and he drops dead, has a heart attack, and you remarry. That's fine. Okay? No problemo. Once the spouse dies in the new covenant the marriage is severed You can't talk to the person anymore. You can't see him anymore. They have nothing to do with you If you are having visitations you need to stay here for prayer <laughs> They're gone and you can get married again. See Right so let's say you get divorced for incompatibility reasons that's a sin and then you don't get remarried and you die you go to the judgment seat of Christ oops that's a mistake uh, sh judgment seat of Christ and then you have to give an account of that divorce as a Christian you say well I don't like his attitude I'm out of here boop you left okay but you never remarried again which is fine that you there's no requirement to Get married or require not to get married. Yeah. So you have to give an account at the judgment seat? Yes. As soon as you're a Christian, you have to give an account of everything you've done with your body, whether it be good or bad. So when and you say give an account, I mean, is there going to be like repercussions? Yes. You lose rewards. Correct. You lose rewards. Now, yesterday you started yelling at somebody, told them to F off. You got to face that again at the judgment seat of Christ and you lose rewards for what you said uh, You give somebody a cup of cold water in the name of Jesus Judgment seat of Christ you get a reward for that Everything you do with your body Paul said is 
reviewed at the judgment seat of Christ and you win, gain rewards or lose them based on your what you did with your temple so to speak gain because then you lost more than you gained your rewards go clunk down a lot of Christians are going to be at the judgment seat of Christ and have no rewards some of them not by their own fault let's say I've had the privilege of having a couple people get saved during deathbed repentance and they don't have any rewards they just received Christ and they died well that's your, that's your your works for God that is tried by fire and that's what uh, that's answering addition to his question Everything you do as a born-again Christian from that moment on Okay, your life is completely changed <clears throat> So as soon as you're saved Everything you do with your temple is those are the judgment seat of Christ after you're dead Okay, and then the fire of God burns away your works and if it's hay or stubble it's burnt away to nothing. You get no rewards. So let's say I gave you a cup of cold water in Jesus' name, but I really had an ulterior motive. I wanted to get in, be friends with you so I could sell you an insurance policy. Okay, at the judgment seat of Christ, that's going to burn off. I'm going to get no rewards for blessing you because I had an ulterior motive, so to speak. Correct? However, if I gave you this and that, because of Christ and I he loves you and I'm trying to help you hey that thing is gold and silver on judgment day and it burns brighter and you get great rewards even the little things you do for people if done with a good motive gets a reward and he said actually he used the illustration of just giving somebody a cup of cold water what he was saying was even little things the Holy Ghost is keeping track of it He's writing this down and you're going to get a reward for it and God's a loving giving God and he likes to give rewards and he wants to bless you and he wants to give to you because that's the way he's built he can't help it he's a giver and he can't help it he can't stop himself he can't control it okay so how'd that illustration there go <laughs> let's try another one <laughs> and this is a mistake here this should say uh, White, this is not white thrown there. I made a mistake. Sorry Judgment seat of Christ should be there. I apologize the saved person now. Let's take this scenario Gets married and divorced as a sinner. They're saved here. That's all forgiven Washed in the blood then they get married again divorced married divorced but they have a bunch of rotten men which is common because you're marrying guys in church Wow, gee. Get a better guy at a bar any day of the week than getting a guy at church. Duh. But anyway, you're choosing with church. You sow what you reap, you reap what you sow. Uh, better yet, you go to a Muslim mingle or Christian mingle. You're dead in the water. You're you're mingling on there for people with demons. They're on there. You don't know who they are. You probably never know who they are. The whole thing's a farce. But anyway, all those divorces, okay, are evaluated at the at the judgment seat of Christ. So let's say you got married and divorced him or her because their feet stink. That's a sin. You married this guy. That was a sin. You asked for forgiveness. God forgave you. You got divorced because he started a uh, child sex ring. Okay, you got divorced. That was a legal divorce. He's a fornicator. So you got married again Then you got divorced because you guys couldn't agree on money. That's a sin So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is you got comings and goings goods and bads and then at the judgment after your death Then it's determined by fire what rewards you get and what rewards you lose That's why it's so important for you to understand that what you say and do in this life matters in eternity because you're being watched by the Holy Ghost everything's being written down what you do what you said what you did it's all being noted 
and God's keeping track as a just God must. A just God cannot overlook something, but keep track of something over there. Can't do it. God is no respecter of persons. Truth goes everywhere. But on the judgment seat of Christ, you're not going to go to hell because your sin was buried at Calvary. It's not a judging you for your eternal soul in hell. It's talking about your works, whether you get a reward for that or you lose a reward for that. Tried by fire. Some of it's gold and silver. Some of it's hay and stubble. Okay, so let me say one last thing to get myself off the hook. <clears throat> if you divorce somebody for sinful reason, and if you married somebody else and that was a sin, those are not unpardonable sins. There's only one unpardonable sin, and it's not divorce or remarriage So even though you may lose rewards in the judgment seat of Christ after your death You can still be forgiven for that now if you confess it and repent of it So if you've been divorced Do not let that destroy you you can be forgiven for that as you could be for any sin except only one there's only one sin. You you can still serve God. You can you there's still keep going. You know. Everybody fails at stuff. Everybody does. Yeah. I've had several marriages. I don't recall how many there were, but anyway, they were all happy. And I buried that at Calvary, you know. And I married a Christian wife as the first one I have a Christian woman I died I married and I stuck with this one and if <laughs> if I don't I'm severely punished but anyway <laughs> I came to the Lord I was forgiven by mercy and grace not through any good works or abilities of my own I absolutely suck I stink from head to toe but mercy came over me and grace come to me that's all I've got that's my only hope and God said, I forgive you, Mike. Mercy came to me, see? And so, well, I said, well, since I'm forgiven, could I come boldly to the throne of grace and receive mercy and grace to help in time of need? And I heard a yes. And so I said, well, do I have to keep living a secular life and doing this? And No. Can I find a place to serve and not waste the rest of my life? I heard a yes. So I came in and I'm standing here talking to you. Yep. And am I special? Am I special? Good God, no. That benefit is available to every human being, no matter who they are, or how sinful they are. Mercy is available for every person. Every person. I am not special in any way. Grace. Covered me. I just took advantage of it. And if somebody else wants to take advantage of it, bang, you're in. It's not because you're a special this and that. No. Not at all. So maybe you had a bunch of marriage. Maybe you had a bunch of bad things. Good. You could help somebody else later after you're filled with the Holy Ghost. You know what they went through. You're in a better position to help somebody. I know what it's like to go through divorce. Hey, I'm helping people that are. Okay. okay. All right, well, let's stop here then. Any questions? Oh, there's one there. What? <laughs> Jeez. That one sin that will not be forgiven, then what is it? Oh, so <laughs> Who let him in? <laughs> <laughs>
the unpardonable sin is blasphemia of the Holy Ghost. Blasphemia is not unpardonable. It's him blasphemy him and you must be do it. You must do it uh, of your own free will knowing you're doing it. So I've had over 100 people come to me for counseling over the years and they said hey, I think I blasphemed the Holy Ghost and I never found one of them that did that's a demonic delusion They always tell everybody that that's a common lie from demons you blaspheme the Holy Ghost The second big one is you lost your salvation. I've heard that over a hundred times You lost your salvation. You're not saved anymore Can't you get it? Don't you get it if I was a demon? I'd tell you that wouldn't wouldn't I wouldn't you I mean, it's just a common lie Would you? Geez come up with something more creative. They don't if it works demons don't create anything if something's working They're lazy If the lie works, they don't bother to work up another one They just keep feeding that crap to them. Yes, sir The way I was understanding According to what the scriptures say uh, Maybe I'm misunderstanding blaspheming the Holy the Holy Ghost is like when Jesus was rebuking the Pharisees, they knew that the works he was doing was from God, so they were rejecting basically what the Word of God is. That am I making myself clear? Uh, uh, yeah, like, let, let, let me clarify it for you, so you don't have to struggle through it. They knew they were blasphemy because they knew he was the Mes Moshiach, the Messiah. Because he had fulfilled all the truth, they knew it, but because of their greed and their perversion and their desire for power, politicians, they didn't want to receive him, so they rejected him and they insulted him by claiming that his works were satanic. They actually told him that he was chuck full of demons. He's chuck full of demons. Why are you listen to him? But they knew what they were doing. Blasphemia does not work. With the Holy Ghost unless you know what you're doing and you do it deliberately Okay, the demons tell you you did it, but you didn't do it. I've never met anybody that actually did it Because you have to know what you're doing It's not like a regular sin Right there's sins of commission and there's sins of omission a lot of times you commit an omission sin You didn't know you did it God. What do I? Oh, I should have oh, I'm so sorry. I should well, that's not blasphemy. You have to know what you're doing to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. That's why so many people don't do it. They, Paul said, I was a blasphemer, he said, but I obtained mercy because I did it in ignorance. God. Right? But the Pharisees and scribes didn't do it in ignorance. They knew who he was. They knew he had the Holy Ghost without measure, and they said he had demons anyway. That's blasphemy. Those people went to hell. None of them got saved because they had blasphemed the Holy Ghost. That's not something you and I would ever even think of doing. It didn't cross our minds. Not in a million years. No way. We red carpet the Holy Ghost here. We don't say anything negative about him. We want him here. Quick. He brings all the benefits of Jesus here. <laughs> I do everything I can to make him feel comfortable here. Yes. Yes, ma'am. So when uh, when parents divorce, can a spirit of divorce run through the family? What? When parents divorce, can a spirit of divorce? Oh yeah, well, absolutely, sure. Oh, that happens all the time. Yeah. Spirit of adultery, spirit of drugs, anything, any any demons that get in up here, try to go down and re replicate the pattern below. Happens all the time. Yeah. Drugs, alcohol, obesity, you'll see just truckloads of fat people in the family. Unclean spirits. Bunch of addicts, alcoholics. A lot of broken relationships, broken marriages, different things. Oh yeah. They they will replicate themselves. Uh <laughs> <laughs> All right, is that it? What? So let's say people, that, uh, somebody here, the non-believer, and they see someone get healed, and they know it was from the Holy Ghost, but they still reject it. They're not 
saying it was from the devil, would that be blasphemy? No. no. Yeah. But they just refused to believe that it was the Holy Spirit working. Yeah. That wouldn't be blasphemy. Unbelief or doubt. No, that's not blasphemy. Mm -mm. Nah. See, blasphemy, true blasphemy requires a motivation in your soul. But so uh, you can blaspheme anything that's sanctified or sacred. Right? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Let's say that we held a special ceremony here that these chairs were divinely inspired. And they were God chairs. And then I announced it to everybody. Hey, we you're sitting on God chairs. We had a special ceremony. They're divine chairs. And you go, I think these chairs suck. Well, you just blaspheme the chairs. Because he knew we had sanctified him. Right? But if he doesn't know that, well, it, it's ignorance. It's not blasphemy. It's just somebody saying something stupid. Being stupid is not a blasphemy. You have to have the motivation and the intent of the heart to blasphemia. Right. A lot of people say, like Jesus said, blasphemy of God and Jesus and angels and Michael, all that stuff's forgivable. The blood of Christ covers all of that if you repent. Right? But there was only one thing it didn't cover, and that was the only hope a person has to get saved is the Holy Ghost. Since you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, that severed you for eternity. Because there now there's no there's no way to get you to God. Because he's the teleporter, so to speak, the conduit to Christ. He's Jesus' uh, executor of his estate, so to speak. And he's here tonight. And he's ready to kick the devil's butt. <laughs> All right. Any last questions before we close in prayer? None? Okay. Uh, Father God, I uh, uh, did my best tonight to explain uh, this touchy subject. If I made a mistake, I apologize for it. Uh, if I need to correct something, I'd be happy to do it. Please, please tell me what I need to correct and I'll fix it ASAP. And Lord, I want to talk to you about something just for a second. There are people here tonight who have had multiple divorces and they sin and they pick up demons. There are people here tonight who were serial adulterers when they were younger. They picked up lust spirits. There are people here tonight who have transfer spirits from prostitution when they were in the military they were in the military they were overseas they went to prostitutes they picked up transfer spirits they committed adultery they experimented with their sexuality when they were younger they picked up a transfer spirit from some person who was infected uh, they were committing adultery with a man or a woman who was spiritual and had demons and those demons transferred into their body <clears throat> they married somebody when they were living in sin and their spouse was living in sin but then later on they got saved but the spirits are still hiding in their body even though they got saved because as we know being born again does not automatically remove demons and it does not automatically heal your body those are benefits of the cross of Calvary, Lord, that we cherish that come after we get saved by God's grace and mercy. Tonight, Lord, there's some people here who have lust issues. They use pornography to hide scars on their soul, wounds from childhood, wounds from their first marriage when they were verbally and physically abused. There are scars on their soul. And those scars need to be removed by the Spirit of the Lord. And I know these ugly lust demons, they're nasty and they're persistent. But they can be beaten and destroyed if the person will repent in Jesus' holy name. And tonight at this altar call, Lord, I'm asking you, by faith I decree, I want every lust demon out of every person 
who comes down here to repent no more lust demons no more obsessive compulsive masturbation no more obsession with pornography no more obsession with adultery no more guilt and shame over past sins it all goes tonight everything goes tonight freedom freedom comes here tonight here in Jesus holy name amen I'm going to have the ministry team come down and help me real quick. Come come forward. Those of you who have to leave, thank you for coming to the seminar. Uh, don't forget about the donation boxes. Bless you, brother. On your way out, thank you for your support. The utility bills are going to triple here real quick. We appreciate your help. We're going to have an altar call. If you have a lust spirit of some kind, you have a lust spirit, of some kind and in our society lust spirits are rampant rampant there is sexual sin everywhere and once these spirits get in your body they give you obsessive obsessive compulsive desires they push you to do things you don't want to do they turn you into a chronic masturbator I had lust demons when I was in high school in junior high and I masturbated so much I had scabs on my penis I had scabs on my penis when I was in junior high and I didn't understand why I couldn't stop I had picked up lust demons and the demons were pushing me to do things I didn't want to do Now, why are you admitting that? That's embarrassing. I don't find it embarrassing at all. The devil had me by the throat when I was young, and now the Holy Ghost is going to grab him by the throat right here in this room. And if you were like me, you had scabs on your penis, didn't you? Don't raise your hand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know what compulsive masturbation is. I was there as a young person, and it is... A guilty, sad, sick life. You can't stop thinking about sex thoughts. You're constantly having images. You have dreams. You have these lust thoughts. It drives you crazy. It drives you crazy. Ladies, I want to talk to you for a minute. You slept with some guy, and after you slept with him, you felt different a week or two later. Something was different about you. You had a temper problem now you didn't have before. You had uh, an eating issue you didn't have before. You married somebody who had demons, and all of a sudden now you've got strange symptoms. Those are transfer spirits with infected spouses. You can get rid of them tonight if you repent of your sin. You call out to the Lord. You can get rid of them tonight. You can get rid of every bad spouse you've ever been with. You can get rid of all of them. The Holy Ghost can turn you into a spiritual virgin. How does he do it? I have no idea. It's a miracle. He's a miracle worker. I don't have any miracles, but he's got all of them. Every single miracle. All you got to do is repent. Come on. Let's do it together. Just do it. Father God, please forgive me. Close your eyes. Come on. Whisper it out. You got to confess your sin. Now, if you did something perverted or something, just whisper it so nobody can hear you. But you got to confess it, and the Holy Ghost will hear you. Just speak it out. You pervert. I was a pervert. I was a whore. I had multiple sex partners. I experimented with my sexuality, Lord, and I picked up a spirit. I wounded you, and I hurt you when I temporarily dated a man or a woman, a lesbian, a homosexual. There are gays in my family. There are demons in my family. There are lust demons in my family. Everybody in my family were cheaters and they got divorced and they all committed adultery. And these spirits have been pounding on me now for years. These spirits have manifested in me with temper problems, food problems, anorexia, bulimia, obesity. These spirits are manifesting in me and I want them out. Father God, forgive me for what I did. Forgive me for my sin, Lord. I confess it right now. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But you got to confess it first. 
I want all my husband's demons out of me. I want all my wife's evil spirits out of me right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I want all these wicked transfer spirits. I want all these transfers from the occult and witchcraft and sorcery, Ouija boards, light as a feather, everything I got involved in as a child. God, I repent of and I confess it right now in the name of Jesus. I command it. Come out in the name of the Lord right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out right now. Come out in the name of the Lord. Get out of my body, you pervert. You pervert. Get out of my body right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go in Jesus' name. You pervert. Get out of my body. Chronic masturbation. Come out of my body right now. Pornography, I bind your power. Yes, right now. Come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Every spirit from my husband, I bind your power. My ex-husband, my ex-wife, every spirit from us. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of God. Get out of me. Come out right now in Jesus' holy name. Go! Get out of your stinking poor spirit. There he is. He just jumped. Get out of my body. Right? Come out of there quicker. Come out quickly. Come on out. Come out of there. Come out, you pervert. Come out right now. Get out of there, you pervert. Come out now. Every transfer spirit. Come out right now. Come out of me. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Move quickly. I have the anointing to smash you. Get out of my body. Every wound, every spirit. Go right now. Come out right now. Get out of my body right now. Every homosexual spirit, you pervert, come out of there right now. Come out. Oral sex, come out of me right now. Oral sex, come out. Right now. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out. Self-condemnation, low self-esteem, condemning myself for masturbating. I repent of it right now. Go. Come out. Come out of my body right now. Go, I said. Come out of there right now in the name of Jesus. Every demon from my husband, come out now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my husband, come on now. Every cheat, my husband passed away. Come on, but, but he, he was full yeah. of demons and oh, he died I right know. next to me in bed. Oh, and no, I haven't been the what's same. his name? His name was Steve. Oh, they they entered you. Breathe, up, he was dead. yeah, they transferred over. Okay, breathe, Steve. breathe out of your and mouth. I haven't been the same since. Come on. No, I know they, it's them. Come on, <laughs> blow out of your mouth, blow like that. Keep blowing. Come out, devil. You come out. Steve, Jesus come out. Out. Come, out. come out right now. Jesus is only Every time I committed adultery and picked up a transfer spirit, get out of my body right now. Come out of there, you pervert. Come out of my body right now, you pervert. Come out right now. Get out of there, you pervert. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Come on, you fight harder. Come on, you have to learn to fight. You have to learn to fight. Yes, you do. Close your eyes. I command you. Say it. I command you. In the name of... Come out, you pervert. Oral sex. Come out of there. I command you, you spirit. Believe my body now, you demon of rejection. I command you to come out. Get out of my body. Come out right now. Get out of my mouth. Come out of my mouth right now. Come out. Get out of my body right now. There you go. Just like that. Say it again. Say it like you mean it. Say it again. Come on. Come on now. Hey, come on over here. Now, just listen to me. Okay? Your, your husband is gone now. Right. But he's still here. He's still here now. What was his name again? Steve? His name was Steve. Okay, now just relax. Take a big breath. I mean, just a big breath and relax. I know. Take a big breath. What's your name? Lorraine. Lorraine, okay. Take a big breath. Calm down. Take a breath. Father God, I got Lorraine here. And she loves you. And she wants to serve you. She does not want to have Steve's demons anymore. She does not 
want him in her life anymore. Yes, Lord. I want everything. The devil God. tricked her. Now, just just uh, listen to me. I'll pray. Breathe out of your mouth. The devil tricked me into marrying him. I shouldn't have done it. No, just breathe out of your mouth. Breathe. He tricked me into marrying him. I should have never done it. And shortly after we were married, I knew I'd made a tragic mistake. And his spirits transferred into my body after the demons murdered him in bed. And they must now come out of me in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Breathe. Come out, spirit. Steve, come out. Steve, there he comes. Keep coughing. Come out, Steve. Come out, Steve. Steve, come out. Hold that. Come out. Go! Stephen, come out. Steve, go! Fear and terror. Fear and horror. Terror. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get him. Steve, come out. Steve, come out. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Get out. Come out of her vagina. Come out of there. Come out of her. Come out of her spine. Right now. Come out of her spine. Go. Come out of her kidneys. Come out. Come out of her bladder. Come out of her womb. Go. Adultery. Come out. Fornication. Come out. Oral sex. Come out. Anal sex. Come out. Right now. Go. Go. Oral sex demons. I command you to come out. Anal sex demons. I command you to come out. Get out of there right now. Low self-esteem and rejection. Come out. Abuse. There he comes. Abuse. Come out of it. Satan. Come out. What is it? I'm sorry? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with me? Concern for my wife? Concern for my wife. And what about you? Though? Oh, I have to pray for us to get out of me. Yeah. Now, do you hate it? Yes. Are you sure? Come out. Come out. Are you using it? Are you using it as a coping mechanism? Get out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Get out of there. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Child abuse. Go. Get out. Come out. Go. Leave fear and terror. Release him, let him go. Lord, I want you to give this brother the gift of hate. He doesn't hate it. And these demons are going to give him a terminal illness when he gets older. And he's going, going to go from pure hell. And I don't want that to happen. I know you don't. I want you to give him the gift of hate. For this spirit of lust he picked up as a kid. Right now, every demon from my husband comes out now. Come out of me. Every transfer spirit. All of his lust demons. I release them now. I release them now. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. You get them out of there. You know what they cause later in life? Sicknesses. Satan, I command you, come out now. Demon of food, come out of me. Right now. Using food as a comfort, I command you to come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. You gotta tell them to come out. What? In the name of Jesus, whatever doesn't Yeah, come out of me right now. What's wrong with her? What's wrong with her? I don't know, to be honest. That's why we're here. What's the symptoms? The symptoms? She's got pelvic pain. Chronic pain for the past six years. Oh, six years? Yeah. What happened seven years ago? Eight years ago. Something happened? Uh, we had our first child eight years ago. We had in vitro fertilization. Was it a hard uh, pregnancy? Yeah, well, we had six IVF cycles, six oh. IVF cycles, 
um, she had gestational diabetes during pregnancy. Oh, okay, got it. You had a hard pregnancy? You had a hard pregnancy? I can't hear you out of this ear. What's wrong with that ear? What's wrong with that ear? I can't hear. What's wrong with that ear? I can't hear. Since when? Like 12 years ago. 12 years ago? What happened 12 years ago? I just woke up. What happened? I woke up throwing up and I couldn't hear. Were you, were you alone then? You just woke up and your ear was, this one's deaf? Is it totally deaf? No, I can hear a little bit. Now, what happened, what happened 13 years ago? Did something bad happen? What? Did you lose your job? Did you go through bankruptcy? Did somebody hurt somebody in your family? Did somebody die? I was really mean at work. <laughs> you were mean at work? All right. Ready? Say, dear Jesus, please forgive me. Please forgive me, Lord. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I command this spirit that entered your body during that pregnancy to come out of your hips. Come out right now. Come out of there. Get out of there, buddy. Come out. Come out of there. Get out of my body. Go. Get out. Right Come out. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Get out. Amen. Get out. Come out. Up and out. Up and out. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Um, I have pain right here, and I just wanted to clear. I'm on day 11 of fasting, and I just wanted to get everything out. I just yeah. to get what are you trying to get out? Um, well, I've, God just made up names of people because I've, I've repented before and cut up on God's Repented of what? Sex, you know. With okay, did you pick up transfer spirits? I guess so, but I've never, like, cast them out. Okay. Yeah. Now, you don't need to fast anymore. Just go ahead. Just go ahead and repent. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry that I committed adultery. I'm so sorry that I let these men into my body and their demons transferred in. And I've had nothing but problems. And the demons told me that I didn't need to cast them out, so I held off on it, thinking fasting would do it, and I found out fasting doesn't do it. I have to cast them out. And I command every ugly man I ever slept with to come out of my body right now. Every husband, every boyfriend, every lover, every one night stand, every rape, come out now. Come out of me now. Come out now. You pervert, come out of me now. Come out, you pervert. In Jesus' mighty name, come out. You pervert. You pervert, come out of my body right now. Come out of my body right now. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Can I get deliverance for, it's yeah. not for lust, it's yeah. for, for mental illness. Yeah, I know. Now, how you been doing since you were here last week? I, I'm okay. Just hanging in there. Okay, that's not the answer I need. Okay. How are the demons beating you from last week? Uh, probably a little better. Do I need to have this done weekly or how often? No, you got to get, get do it till they're all out. Okay. Then you're cured. Okay. Now, uh, what are they doing to you? How are they doing? There's just still pathways in my brain. They're yeah, I know. And what, what is that? What are they saying? Um, I can't think of anything. They're just, um, you know, the, the same old routine. Like, what is the routine? Just too reserved. Too uh, what? I'm, I'm too isolated. Too reserved. Uh, oh, you know, is your I, I boyfriend here I don't, tonight? Yeah, He's I don't, over I don't, here. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't function. I don't work. Are you guys living together? No. You don't. Okay. Do you sleep together? Okay. Now, we're not going to be able to get these demons out when you commit an adultery. Because they'll use that as a stronghold. He gives me a ride over me, so I don't know how So, raise your hands. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. 
for committing sexual sins. I just sat through a sex, sexual sin seminar. And the demons told me I didn't have to stop sinning. They tricked me again. I'm going to I'm going to repent tonight. Right now. Do it. Do it. Come on, do it. Come on. Come on. Get out of that body right now. Every demon for my husband. Every heartbreaking disappointment. Every cheating. All of it. Every negative thought in my head. Now the demons gave me a wound, demons gave me a wound infection. Brother Mike warned me about this three years ago. Satan, I command you to come out of me. Right now. Come out now. Come out now, I said. Go. Come out now. How'd that go? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's get rid of that guy right now. Let's get rid of all the lies, all the negativity, all the lies in your head, all the negative thoughts all the time, all the ungodly thoughts. Come on. I cast them out. I'll never believe what I, what I told my dad just yesterday. What'd you tell him? Well, I got pissed off because, well, he, was, he wasn't going to me, and rightly so, because I was going on and on. But it just triggered me whenever he ignores me because uh, it reminds me of a, a kid who used to you know, treat me that way. Okay, go ahead and repent of it. Now, that's a rejection demon. <laughs> Father God, I repent over dishonoring my father because that brings a curse on me I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus and I break this curse off me and I'm not going to dishonor my dad again come out Satan come out evil curses come out evil curses come out come out of there you stinking pervert come out of my body right now come out of my genitals come out of my penis right now get out of my body come out come out Dishonoring my parents. Come out. That's a horrible sin. I repent of it. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Come out of me. Come out right now. Get out. Come out. I command every ounce of evil to come out of me. Evil, come out. Now listen, if you need deliverance, come up here quickly. If you sit there and do nothing, you know what you're going to get? Nothing. You reap what you sow. You got to step out by faith and come down here and fight. Come on, let's fight. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Fear. I command you to come out of my body right now. Every ugly man that ever touched my breasts, my vagina, my back, my head, my soul. I command all of them out. Get out of me. Come out of there. Hello? Come on. Get out. Spirit of infirmity. Come out of the room. Come out. Right now. Come out now. Tell him to come out. I command you, you spirit of infirmity. Come out of my shoulder right now. Go heal, heal. Thank you, Jesus. Every ugly man, all of them, go. All of them, all of them, go. Come out. Keep coughing. Go. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out right now. Keep coughing. Come out, devil. Come out quicker. Keep coughing. Come out. Come on. Keep going. Come out, Satan. Come out of my body. Come out of me. Stop trying to kill me. Stop trying to kill me. Come out right now. Come out. Stop trying to kill me. Get out of my shoulder. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Breathe. Get out of my body. Breathe out of your mouth. And a girl. Come out. Come out. Every man that took advantage of me, used me for sex, used my money, used my time, stole my love. Come out of me right now. Every one of them, all of them. Go. Get out of my body right now. 
every demon from my insane family go all the demons from my kids come out all the demons from my husband come out go in Jesus holy name come out in the mighty name of the Lord get out of there get out of my body come out I said go get out sorrow and misery go insanity come out go get out of my body right now come out of my feet come out of my shoulders come out of my chest go right now go get out of that body right now come out come on let your tears go come on Smitty Satan come out of me right now Satan loose your hold come out I command you to go get out of that stomach come out infection I command you to die and come out of my body right now die I said die you dog die like a dog come out all the demons from my family come out fear of anxiety and fear and worry go come out fear and worry fear of my children fear of their future fear of finances fear of my insane husband go come out right now get out of my body right now go go Come out of your stomach. Come out of my stomach. Get out. Now. Go. Get out. Now. Get out of that body right now. Get out of there. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Satan, come out of my mother right now. Get out of her. Go. Go. Amen. Amen. Come out right now. Amen. Amen. Come out of my mother right this second. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of my mother right now. Come out of her stomach. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I command you. Come out of my mom. Come out of my mom. You spirit of infirmity, get out of my body right now. Get out of my body, and a girl. Get out of my body right now. Come out of my mom. Come out. Come out of my mom. Go. There they come. Glory to God. Every demon from my stepdad. Come out of my mom. All my stepdad's demons. Go. There he comes. Glory to God. They're coming out right now. There they come. Glory to God. Glory to God. Good. Hey, you got the anointing. See that? It's working. Good. Come out, Satan. Come out of my mother. Amen. All of them. All my stepdad's demons. Come out of her mouth. Leave my mom. Leave my mom right now. Come out of there. Come out. You get out of my body right now. Did you hear me? I'm not playing around with you, you rotten evil spirit. You come out of my body. Every transfer spirit, come out of my body right now. Every spirit of religion, come out of my head. Every spirit from church, come out of my throat. There it comes. Hold that. Hold right now. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of my throat. There it is. Come out of there. Quickly. Come out of my throat. Come out of my breast. You come out of my vagina. Come out of my womb. I command every oral sex spirit. Come out. Anal sex. Come out. Come out. Get out of there. Drugs. Out. Drugs. Out. Ecstasy. Let's in lust demons. Go. Ecstasy. Lost demons. Party demons. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. You speak in tongues? No, I okay. did, but I stopped. No, that's not Someone true. Told me I was so no, that's not true. You can still speak in tongues. That was a lie from the devil. Ready? Just follow me. There you go. Keep going. There you go. There you go. There you go. You got it. Speak it out. Speak it out. And a girl. Speak it out. Come on. Come on. Good girl. There you go. There you go. 
Hey, hey, listen, you guys live around here? No, we're in California. California? Yeah. Oh. Oh. We came out here just to see you. Can you send me an email? Yeah. Mike, Mike at hardcorechristianity.com. Yeah, she's watching okay. her videos on YouTube and stuff. Oh, okay. So. I need to send you something. Okay. That a girl. Good. That was a lie from the devil. He told you you didn't have it. You do have it. There you go. Good girl. Was she abused as a child? Possibly. Are you the first husband? I'm the first husband, but not the first partner. Was she abused before you met her? Uh, maybe as a child. Verbally abused? Uh, her parents, her mom is real mean to her. She's got, yeah. Uh, What's her mother's name? Tomasa. Tomasa. Come out! Tomasa, you must come out of your daughter tonight. Come out! I release my mother right now. Just do what I tell you. I turn her over to the Lord. And I let her go now. Tomasa, in the name of Jesus, come out of me. Go, I let you go. Had a girl. Good. Come on, let your mother go. Forgive her and let her go. Had a girl. Forgive her and let her go. Good. And I let you go and I bless you in the name of Jesus. Had a girl. Let your mother go. Yeah, what you doing? Sorry. Uh, I wanted to ask you just one second because today I let go of the spirit of pride. I had a lot of that in me. Oh, you did? My mom told me I today when I clicked and I realized that it's people God who's blocking all my blessings. And I just want just a small prayer just for God bless me because I will never go back to pride at all. Oh, okay. I declare that I'm not going to speak in tongues. Can you speak in tongues? What? I don't know. I, I, I Did you it. used to? I've done it and, I, and I've done it, but I don't know if it was real. Oh, okay. That's, a, that's the only problem. Ready? Just pray after me. Borra Baba. Yo Moshaba. Velo Shata. Kolamasi. Vekoba. Vekomasiya. Andorama. Vakole. Borra Mashanda. Bola Mashanda Ravashi. Bless him, Lord. Bola Mashanda Ravashita. Bless him, Lord Jesus. Borra Shata. Varamashanda Rava. Keep going. Bola Nana Mashanda Rava. Randora Mashanda Revi. Alama, bless him, Lord. Andara Mashandara Varia. Yelola la Mashandara Vasideva. Come out of there. Ura Mashandara Vasideva. Namusha Valava. Yanono Mashandara Vasideva. Yekola Vasheti. Ula Mashandara Vasideva. Spirit, come out of my throat right now. Ura Mashandara Vasideva. Get out of my body right now. Go. Satan, go! In Jesus' holy name. Hey, you speak in tongues? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Let me hear you. Oh, excellent. Okay. No, hey, speak in tongues. Go ahead. Come on. Go ahead. Louder. 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 Yes, I, I was. Huh? Yeah, I was doing. So okay, calling. come help her then. Come help her. Ready? Go. Louder. 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 Keep going. Beautiful. Keep going. Louder. 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 Come on, at a girl, louder. Ura moshandara vasile vala vashandara vas. Hey, it was Mike at hardcorechristianity.com. Yeah, thank you. Ura moshandara vasite vara va. Your mother was verbally abusive. Okay, now listen. What happened was, listen to me. Your mother transferred in fear demons. You've got fear demons in there. And when you were a kid, you had terror. What's her name? Tomasi? Tomasa. Tomasa? Okay, now, you have to release your mother before you leave here tonight. You cannot leave here with your mother. You got to let her go. You don't need a mother. You have a Heavenly Father now. 
right? Yes, I do. Now you repent of this fear, this anxiety, and let your mother go. Ready? Lord, I repent of this fear and anxiety about my mom. Her mother verbally abused her when she was a kid. Nagging for her. And her name is Tomasa. Tomasa, the mother. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out of there right now. In Jesus' holy name, I command you to get out. Get out of my body. You go right now, you stinking devil. Listen, folks, you got to start fighting if you want to get delivered. If you stand around like a smoke shop Indian, you're going to get nothing from God. Okay, You need to get angry at the devil and fight back. Okay, you ready? Switch over to singing now. It draws in the Holy Ghost. Ready, go. No, no music. No, you sing in tongues. Ready? Good. Then a girl. Singing in tongues is the highest form of worship known to man. It draws in the Holy Ghost. No, he likes your voice the way it is right now. Sing it out. Do you nitpick yourself a lot? No, but I just, I can't remember Jesus in my head. I want to sing this song. Like a uh, yes, uh, can that. That's not going to help you. Singing in tongues is incredibly beneficial. Huh? Now stay right here. I need to give you something. Start singing. Go ahead. Come on now. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Can I speak with you for a Yeah. Yeah, I'll be right back. Got to give this to that girl. I want you to take this home with you. Okay? You got a nice gift of tongues, but it sounds a little stale. Okay? You just follow these scriptures. That's the benefits of speaking in tongues. The Greek word is glosa. And then you follow these steps. Okay, and your your this whole thing will completely change within forty eight hours. Okay? Now, what you do is you slow your gift of tongues down and you put a little hum to each syllable, like this. At a girl, good. Come out. Um, I'm having a. I came yesterday, and I spoke to uh, Mr. Estrada, but I, I wanted to come meet you and talk to you because I um, I was recommended to you by a Sister Mine at the River of Life. I go to New Life Community Service Church, but the River of Life is my original home for the last 13 years. My mom brought me there. Um, I have a niece that's 10 years old. She's in the mental illness hospital. And um, my Which niece, one? Uh, her name's Alexa. Um, the one, Phoenix Children. Okay. 